This screencast in Chapter 5 is going to cover merchandise sales and purchases. So as you've read already, merchandisers are both buyers and sellers, depending on what role they're in, will drive what accounts we use to record merchandise transactions. So you'll see different accounts depending on what role they're playing. What I thought I would do for this screencast is walk through some transactions and look at them from both the buyer's and the seller's standpoint to demonstrate the differences in recording the transactions. So again, remember we're using the perpetual inventory system. And this first transaction, so what I've done, I've set up one side of the worksheet showing what the, um, the journal entries would look like for the buyer. And then here on the right-hand side, um, the same transaction what the journal entries would look like for the seller. So we're just going to walk through these one at a time. So the first transaction, merchandise purchased or sold. And so from the buyer standpoint, they're going to debit merchandise inventory for $2,000 and credit accounts payable for $2,000. Okay, pretty straightforward. Over on the seller standpoint or seller side, we're actually going to have two journal entries. And we'll talk about that here. Now, so the first journal entry is the debit to accounts receivable and the credit to sales revenue. Same amount as over here, we're recording the sale itself and then the amount that the customer owes us. The second journal entry here records the cost of that merchandise that we just sold. Just for illustration purposes, I've picked these numbers. So 1200 is the sales price or to, excuse me, 2000 is the sales price, 1200 is the cost um, of this merchandise that the seller paid for it. So COGS stands for cost of goods sold. Uh, again, that's a specialized expense category. It records the cost of the merchandise that we sell. So in this case, we would, our second journal entry would be a debit to cost of goods sold. We would then credit merchandise inventory. And this represents taking this merchandise out of inventory and selling it. So it's no longer in our inventory. We need to show that on our books. And that's what this journal entry does. I recommend to students that you keep these two entries separate. If you try to mix them all up together, it can kind of get confusing because you know that you've got a 2000 that needs to show up and you've got a 1200 that needs to show up. And I will often see students have unbalanced journal entries because they don't figure out all four items. So I would um, recommend keeping them separate, record your sale first, and then the cost of the merchandise. And because they're gonna be two different numbers, um, you wouldn't be selling things for the same um, price that they cost you or else you wouldn't make any money, okay? So again, buyer's side for this type of transaction, just one journal entry to show the um, purchase of the merchandise. And then over on the seller side, we're gonna have an entry for the sales price and an entry to take it out of merchandise inventory and move that cost to cost of goods sold. Okay, second entry, say the buyer returned some merchandise. So they returned $300 worth of merchandise to the seller. We are going to just reverse part of this entry that we made up here initially because we're sending some back. And so we don't have as much merchandise as we had before, so we're gonna Debit accounts payable, because we don't owe the seller as much because we're returning some of the merchandise. And then the credit will be to merchandise inventory for $300. Over here on the seller side, we're gonna have two journal entries. And that kind of follows from what we did up here, okay? So the first entry, we're gonna debit sales returns and allowances. And from your reading, you should recognize that as a contra revenue account. It's gonna show up uh, in the calculation of um, net sales, uh, sales returns and allowances. That's kind of a cost of doing business that we're gonna have some returns and allowances and it's good business practice to keep those separate in a separate account so that we can quantify easily how much merchandise is being returned or and how many allowances we're having to make. If you recall from your reading, um, there's a difference to returns and allowances. Returns are where the merchandise is physically returned to the seller. An allowance would be where there's some issue with the merchandise. It's not exactly what the buyer wanted, whether in quality or color or whatever. And the buyer actually cuts a deal with the seller to get a break on the price. The merchandise is not returned, 
the buyer keeps it and um, that's considered an allowance okay so we record returns and allowances in the same account um, to keep track of those so again the um, the sales price of what was returned is debited to sales returns and allowances the credit is to accounts receivable because again we're giving that buyer um, a reduction in the amount that they owe us now so we need to reduce accounts receivable the second entry we see here is a debit to merchandise inventory for $180 and a credit to COGS, cost of goods sold for $180. And what I've done, um, I've just taken 60% um, of the sales price equals the cost. And that just follows from up here. If you take $2,000 times 60%, the cost of goods sold was 60%. So I, I stayed with the same proportion down here. And again, with this, it's just the reverse in terms of accounts of what the initial entry was because we're re we're receiving some of that merchandise back we're going to restock it to inventory and it's no longer part of our cost of goods sold it's there in inventory to be resold again okay let's take a look down here on the third transaction so this one is a payment of freight now what i wanted to do here and i want to make the point that freight and shipping would be incurred by either the buyer or the seller but not both um, both are shown here to illustrate the differences in recording the cost because as you can see we're using different accounts depending on who's paying the freight so if in the case we had free on board shipping point as our shipping terms if you recall from um, your studying free on board shipping point means that title transfers to the buyer when it leaves the seller's dock okay so they own it through the process which means they would be responsible for paying freight um, when the buyer is responsible for paying freight it becomes a cost an additional cost of inventory so we would debit merchandise inventory and that would become part of the cost of our goods and our credit would be to cash because we're paying that bill conversely if the freight terms were free on board destination then title doesn't transfer until it reaches the buyer the seller owns the the merchandise all the way through and so they would be responsible for paying the freight costs if that were the case then the way we record that entry on the seller's books we don't record it to merchandise inventory we're recording it to delivery expense it's considered an expense um, of um, handling that merchandise so it actually gets the debit would be to delivery expense credit would be to cash so again just to reiterate you wouldn't see both of these transactions happening you'd see one or the other I'm putting um, I'm listing these transactions here to illustrate the difference in recording the cost because we do use different accounts depending on who's responsible for the cost okay let's take a look down here on the fourth transaction so we're going to make a payment within the discount period and we're going to assume the terms are 210 net 30. you should recognize uh, or understand how to interpret um, these terms based on the information in chapter 5. just to review what this means is that these are credit terms so when someone buys um, merchandise on credit um, the terms may vary this is just an example interpreting this the buyer would get a two percent discount if paid within 10 days otherwise the entire amount of the bill is due within 30 days okay that's what those credit or the discount terms mean so first we need to calculate the discount because we're told that the payments made within this discount period so we need to take the original invoice amount and that was up here less the return from the second transaction and this is the net amount due which is seventeen hundred dollars I make a point over here you can't take discounts on what you don't owe so make sure that if there are any returns or adjustments to the original invoice amount that you're subtracting those out before you calculate your discount again you don't owe two thousand dollars so you can't calculate the discount on two thousand dollars so in this case we've got a net amount due of seventeen hundred so that's what we're going to calculate our discount on 
we take $1,700 times 2% because that's what our discount terms say and our discount is $34 okay may seem small can really add up um, over time and you'll see also some reading in your book that kind of shows you um, you know that it, it ends up being a much larger amount than you would think in terms of percentages so we pay within the discount period we've got a discount of $34 let's see how that ends up on both sides of the um, transaction so on the buyer side the entry they're going to make they're going to debit accounts payable 1700 remember if you put if you've got 1700 sitting in accounts payable you got to take the whole thing out even though you might be paying a lower amount because of the discount goes into AP has to come out of AP so that's why the entire 1700 is the debit to accounts payable we're going to have a credit to cash of 1666 that's the net of the 1700 that was due less the discount and then our final credit is to merchandise inventory for the amount of the discount which is $34 the reasoning behind that is that taking this purchase discount and again this is considered a purchase discount in the buyers shoes we're taking a purchase discount it reduces the cost of our merchandise inventory so we're crediting merchandise inventory okay over here on the seller side we're going to have a debit to cash of 1666 that's the amount of the check that we received um, we're going to have a debit to sales discounts because on the sellers side this is considered a sales discount on the buyer side it's a purchase discount same discount just depends what shoes you're in so this is a sales discount this is another contra revenue account okay it's a cost of doing business um, so we'll record that in sales discounts and then we would record a credit of 1700 to accounts receivable because again that bill is being paid off and if 1700 sitting in AR you have to take the whole 1700 out okay you can't leave little junky stuff in AR so this journal entry gets everything out of AR records the correct amount of cash and records the $34 um, cost to sales discounts so just one last note remember figure out whether buyer or seller applies before preparing journal entries because it matters as you can see from these journal entries above the transactions look a lot different for the same business transaction just depending on whether you're the buyer or seller hope this is helpful talk to you soon